this morning. Got a new uh, Porter Cable, what do they call this thing, uh, oscillating multi-tool. Does flush cuts on trim and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, Lowe's had this one on sale for 50 bucks. 49 bucks, I think, and of course with the library discount and all that, and then the library, of course, doesn't pay sales tax, so I think uh, he said we ended up paying like 46 bucks for it or something. But anyway, yeah, of course it comes with your tool. It says 11 piece, so it comes with your tool, the bag, the sanding head, of course some uh, assorted sandpaper and polishing pads, and two flush cut blades it looks like. Or maybe one of them's a grout blade. Yeah, it looks like maybe that one's a grout blade. And then of course your instructions, but anyway, yeah, I'm getting ready to use this. I got a project where I've got some trim that goes through a wall. The trim is going, but the wall is staying, so I gotta flush cut the trim at the wall. And I'll take you with me when I do that. Yeah, and I was wrong. It wasn't a grout bit. Of course, it says right on there wood. Yeah, this was folded over and it looked like an abrasive edge there, but yeah, it's a. That one's a wood blade. And then this one here is a wood and metal blade. And the first thing I notice about this is that it's got a, a quick release for your blade change. I really like that. Spring action, you just pull this back, pull the blade off, put your new blade on, or switch blades, whatever. Yeah, I really like that a lot. But, like I said, I'll take you with me when I do this job, and, and we'll see how it performs in the field. We've got this wood trim here. And this piece of wood trim, let me open this door so I can show you, actually goes through that wall right there. Because this, uh, this wall here was an existing wall, and they had that trim on it. <clears throat> and then they built this wall and put this door in. And yeah, they just uh, built the wall around the trim, basically. So anyway, that's what we bought the flush cutting saw for so yeah I'm getting ready to plug that thing in and fire it up and see if we can't uh, cut this trim right here flush with the wall or at least as flush as I can get it like I said I'll uh, I'll mud that I'll fix it and then uh, it's gonna get rubber cove base all the way around so yeah we'll see all right guys, I've never cut anything with one of these, so we're gonna see. It's got a speed adjustment here on the end. So I think I'm gonna start with the slowest and start moving up from there and see how it works. I've got the blade on there that's for wood and metal, um, simply because I'm not sure. I mean, obviously this is wood, but if I run into a nail or something in there, I'm going to be glad I've got the wood and metal blade on it. So anyway, let's see how this goes.
right, I'm gonna remove this uh, piece of cord around here before I go any farther. It's kind of hindering the process at this point. But yeah, so far this thing gets a thumbs up. One thing I've noticed about it too is it's got these uh, measurement marks on it. So I was watching those to make sure I didn't get uh, too far past the trim and start cutting into the corner there. Because I mean I'm going to have to repair all this anyway. But uh, you know how it is. The less damage you can cause for yourself to repair later on the better off you are. So uh, anyway yeah, I'm going to stop there for a minute and pull off this quarter round. And there we go. Looks like we've got about, oh, I don't know, it took me about six or seven minutes to cut through that. A lot easier than it would have been with any other tool. And uh, we discussed just doing it with a sawzall, but you guys know how a sawzall is. It would have ended up cutting way through into that wood. We'd have had to cut it at a severe angle, so I'd have been left with a much bigger hole to, uh, to patch there. With this tool here, I was basically able to cut it off flush with the wall. So now it's just going to take like a coat of spackle or a coat of mud or something right there to take care of that. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'll continue my review of this tool some more. But so far, let's see, everything I looked at online when I was shopping for one of these, everything from Dremel to Milwaukee, right around the hundred dollar mark uh, Harbor Freight has one for 18 bucks on sale right now uh, of course yeah I did, didn't even consider that one um, and then of course Fine Fine Tools the company that uh, I believe invented these they want uh, about anywhere between four and five hundred dollars for theirs depending on the accessories it comes with but anyway, this one, Porter Cable, found it on sale at Lowe's for $49. And I think the regular price on it even is like uh, $79, I believe, which still isn't bad. It's got the Porter Cable name on it, runs really good. So far, I'm thrilled with it, guys. Uh, for the price, you can't beat it. I mean, come on, it's half the price of the next cheapest model. Well, besides the Harbor Freight, but. And I got that piece of trim pulled off here. But anyway, there's the cut that I'm left with. I mean, yeah, guys, that's gonna be a breeze to repair. I'll just slap a coat of mud on there. I probably won't even worry about uh, drywall tape. I don't know, I might. I might put a piece of drywall tape on it and mud it. But anyway, yeah, this is going to get rubber cove base here. So I'm not too worried about it from about here down. So yeah, actually all I've got to repair is about three inches there. But I mean, yeah, I couldn't be happier with that cut. That tool just worked perfect for what we needed. But anyway, you all have a good one. And we'll talk to you later.